Since YouTube's a hard place to try and make your starts, I've been trying to be somewhat strategic with the Smash videos I've made so far. Cheat the system a bit, you know? Smash is announced with the Inklings, so let's talk about them. Ridley's rumored? Oh, I better hurry on that one. Daisy got in. Alright, I guess she might net me some views. Wow! Really? But today, today is different. Today's episode is for me. Because today, we're talking about my most wanted character. Someone that I've hoped would join the roster since Smash Brothers began. Yeah! I love Rayman. You've got all these gaming mascots based off of real life people and animals and whatnot, but then you see this. What is this? I had no idea, still don't. But my six-year-old brain gravitated to this oddity and I fell in love with his games. Rayman Legends is one of my favorite games of all time, and Rayman 3 might be my favorite. Naturally, that led to a desire to see him in Smash Brothers but I never expected him. Just a dream of mine that made me happy to think about. And at the time, that's all I needed it to be. He wasn't in Melee, and that was okay. He wasn't in Brawl, and I wasn't phased. And he won't appear in Smash 4 either, but that's just fine and- Why would you do this to me? I was content. I was satisfied. I could have gone my whole life without this dream ever becoming a reality, and I would have been happy ecstatic even. But over these last few years, I've gotten so close. He is in the game. He's even gotten on a roster, just not the right one. It's been ridiculous. I've been teased so many times with zero payback. And after all this, I just, I kind of feel like I deserve it. That Rayman should be in the game. He'd be a great character, very unique. And here is how he'd work. We've got to go the extra mile for this one, because on a surface level, Rayman's not that interesting of a fighter. And that's coming from someone who ranks him above every other video game mascot. Many point to his moveset in Legends as a way he could work in Smash, and yeah, that would work. We'll use that as a baseline, but that's just punches and kicks. They reach a bit further than other characters, but still, no. If Rayman's on the roster, we need to embrace what makes him unique, what he possesses that makes him so special. Or rather, what he lacks. Rayman is dismembered. As such, his moveset should take full advantage of this, attacking in ways that are only possible when you're not limited by your limbs. What other character can bounce their torso around like this? That thing could easily work as a heavy projectile. He's also got to be able to control his descent, the helicopter hair needs to be an important part of his playstyle. Peach's umbrella is an obvious comparison here, but I'd like a little more versatility. I would also argue that Rayman should be one of the fastest characters in the game, but also one of the lightest. Right around here. Heavier than Mewtwo, but lighter than Pikachu. Because somehow that's possible. The last thing he should have is range, pure and simple. He's basically a walking amalgamation of projectiles, so his moveset should take full advantage of that. Now what does that mean from a gameplay perspective? Having a character that hasn't got it all together? Well, first, I think there'd be a unique rhythm to his attacks. They are very, very fast. Just bam, hitbox, no muscles to wind up for Rayman. But they have a lot of end lag. More so than any other character by far. But here's where things get interesting. That lag that time it takes before Rayman can attack again, it only affects the limb he throws out. It may take a second or two for Rayman's fist to come back to him, but that's okay. He's got plenty of limbs to work with in the meantime. Because of this, Rayman actually has different versions of some moves. Weaker attacks he'll throw out if his preferred limb isn't available. Take his up air. Normally he throws a high kick to the skies, but if he tries to do that again, he's gotta use his other foot. And if he does it again, there's no feet left, so he kind of just does this weak headbutt motion. It creates a unique dynamic, where your limbs are a resource that the player has to manage to play Rayman optimally. You'll also notice that several of these attacks leave a lot of gaps in Rayman's body. This is another benefit of being limbless. Rayman may have reach, but he's not a big target, just a collection of smaller ones. 
you slot a Ganondorf back air right here, and guess what? That's gonna whiff. But that's overpowered, right? Well, kinda. As I said, he's not a big target. He's a collection of smaller ones, and the small ones can be hit too. While they're attached to his main body, or following it, I guess, hitting them works the same as hitting any other character. But while they're trying to get back to his body, you can knock them away to delay their return. It's counterplay. You can cripple Rayman's moveset if you isolate his limbs away from him, forcing him to use the weaker moves in his arsenal. As for specific moves, I said we were using Legends as a baseline, which already fills out most of his moveset. He's got a jab combo he can use while moving, his down air gets him back to the ground almost instantly, and the reach of his smash attacks is absurd. Let's talk about his hair next. Rayman joins the ranks of Yoshi and Jigglypuff as a character whose up special kinda sucks, at least for recovering. Instead, pressing the up special causes his hair to start or stop spinning, slowing his fall speed to a crawl. Again, very similar to Peach, but Rayman's hair is a simple toggle. It's instant, a stance change, and he can still attack while using it. And if he uses this on the ground, let's say he fires a gust of wind above him. No damage on that, just a vertical gust bellows. Keeps your foes above you while you wait for your limbs to come back. For his other specials, one is super obvious. A generic charge-up projectile, because we just don't have enough of those yet. But to make Rayman's a little more unique, his acts like a boomerang, though it doesn't deal as much damage on the way back. He can charge this while moving, and both his fists can be used for the move, so you have two shots. So that's his neutral special, obviously, but from here it gets tricky, as while Rayman has had a lot of abilities over the years, not many stand out as must-haves. You could argue the Lum Swing, but I think that works better as a grab and tether recovery. Some people suggest the Plum, like Smash Flash 2 does, but I just don't like that at all. But what else besides those is important to his history? Oh, for God's sake. Look, love them or hate them, you can't talk about Rayman without them. They nearly cannibalized his series. And while an actual rabbit would work better as an assist trophy in my opinion, the plunger guns they and Rayman use would make for a good move. This will be the side special. On its own, it's not the best projectile. It doesn't travel very quickly, you have to reload it after firing, and it's a plunger. It doesn't do much damage. But this is also a skill shot. Much like Mewtwo's Disable, if you hit your opponent when they're facing you, the plunger will stick to their face, and they'll be temporarily stunned as they try to pull the plunger off. Lastly, Rayman's Down Special. I mentioned his torso as a projectile earlier, and I like that idea, so let's have some fun with this. Press the Down Special and Rayman will drop kick his torso. Kinda like the Kung Foot minigame from Legends, there's your reference for ya. But unlike his other limbs, his stomach will not return to Rayman. Instead, the rest of Rayman rubber bands back to his stomach. It may not be the strongest in terms of referencing his history, but doesn't it sound like fun? And that's Rayman in Smash Brothers, a very odd character that the series has never seen the likes of before. He's a tricky opponent with excellent control over his own mobility, but he has to manage his limbs properly to succeed. If he fails to do so, he can't withstand much punishment. Still, the sheer power he has, along with his unorthodox style, will surely make him a fearsome foe on the battlefield. So I think Smash would be improved if Rayman was in the game, but what about you? What do you think the Limbless Wonder should be in Smash? And if not him, what changes do you think could improve the series? Share them in the comments below, and maybe they'll be featured in the next Peasant's Perspective. Generally, there'd be some adventure mode story slideshow thing going here, I started that in the first Smash episode, but I think I'm going to stop now. Sorry if that disappoints you, but it just stopped being fun for me, and I don't want to force myself to do something I don't enjoy. So now you're just stuck with me talking over this artwork. It's nice, right? Go follow MadArts13 on Twitter. He's already drawn several more thumbnails for me, and they all look so good. He's a great artist, give him some love. Also, Annoying Bacoblin got the final destination background, so thank you. That was cool. I did not want to do that myself. I'll have a link to that video in the description. He's fine with you using it as long as you give credits, so if you make videos, you know, why not? It looks good. 
I'm just rambling at this point, but there was a bit of a style change for this episode that will be continuing in the future. I edit Know Your Moves episodes for Relax Alax now, and I'm not going to stop that from bleeding into my own content. I hope that's not a cause for complaints. I can't see why it would be, but if it is... Sorry, I guess? <laughs> Drop shadows on blank backgrounds look good. What can I say? Next episode is going to be different. It started as a Smash video for a longtime veteran of the series, but became something else, because I don't feel like said veteran gets enough love in their own series. So we're going to talk about them next, and an idea I have for a game starring them. See you then!